Hello everybody, it's a bit late. Yes, I am like the worst YouTuber on YouTube going live at like the most awkward time because it's been a really, really busy day. And uh, I, I wanted to go live yesterday because of Marcus Seloff, but um, I came late. So I'm actually using the slides from like yesterday, but you know, the market looks like recovered, but I'm still on my TCs, okay? I need to be a bit more, you know, I'm always disciplined anyway on what I say and what I, 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 I would like to share. You know, it doesn't mean that the market re returns back to glory. I changed my mindset in the market. So I, I'm going to stick to where I am. So today is about stocks. Yesterday was a market sell-off. Uh, looks really concerning. I look at the VIX thinking, oh, it's going above 20. It might be coming up to 25, might be a buying opportunity. And then um, looking on the, on, the, on the broad spectrum of things, thinking, you know, what is going on with the market? I think that's very important. Understanding the market is not just about buying the dip and buy triggers in it. It's about understanding the market. So I'm just trying to download my slides here um, while I'm talking to you, trying to buy some time. But I think I've lost myself. Yes, I'm back. Internet can be quite slow sometimes. So let me get my slides up. Internet is excruciating slow. I can't even download my my slides just now. But hey ho, I will say hello to everyone to see who is online. You know, it's like I was I was meant to come about an hour ago. Uh, it's just been really busy. My daughter's got this Christmas dance ballet thing that she's going to be performing. My son's got piano exams. I'm in charge of that as well. Driving. I'm working. Crypto. It's a lot, but I you know I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm not uh, away. But today I really want to focus on the stocks because the stocks is really the main criteria on the channel. But obviously, you know, I'm here to happy to, to answer questions. So hopefully in this video, as you guys are watching, you know, keep a uh, nice 10, 12 minutes about what I think of the market. A lot of charts that I want to show about and um, you know, digest and see what questions I have and any concerns that everybody has. So I have got my um just prepping my slides just now. I am really, really super multitasking. Never gone multitasking ever since it's a lot that share screen. And let me get my PDF allow done. Kaboom. So really, is the market sell off done? I mean, there's a reason for it that the market's selling off. Things are very expensive, things are a bit hyped up. Interest rates are starting to come in, but before we've got a tapering from the feds that's always wanted it to happen. Most importantly, it's all about inflation. Things are getting more expensive. COVID coming through is an excuse for um, for the stock market to sell off. I think maybe you can put COVID to rest, but I know that a couple of countries are going under lockdown. But as uh, if you're working Goldman Sachs or if you're working somewhere else, it could be a risk, but it's not as risk as a big of a risk like what we've seen 12 months ago. So, you know, if you think about, oh, COVID might be my cause and good lockdown we're going to go excruciating vex going to 32 maybe you can put that risk aside i think it's more about inflation or things getting more expensive you and me going to christmas like today trying to help my wife go christmas shopping and notice things are going up in price not only going in price we can't get anything you can't even get legos things are out of stocks um things that people want are gone off the shelf it's very difficult so inflation is not affecting our daily lives but it's affecting things around us fuel price has gone up utility has gone up Things are getting more expensive. Going back to work, I think that it's more outgoing. Now it's trying to like trying to save, and, but things are going out faster than coming in. So I don't know if you guys feel it, but I feel it. So I think there's a huge um, problem out there. Okay, so let's talk about uh, sell-off, inflation, the pain, the pain. Okay, so uh, before I start, I just want to say hello to everyone. Uh, Mona Mona, I know you're sleeping, but I'm sorry if you're sleeping. I'll try to keep it nice and short. Maybe you can watch it tomorrow if you're not really, really tired. And uh, yeah, before I start, please do click the like. Please like, like, like. And I really do appreciate it. And people might come and see notification YouTube are very, very funny. Like, even if you're on Facebook, please like, like, like. I really, really, really uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it. So uh, good evening again to uh, Marzina. Uh, thank you, Alexis and the Badak Trace. I'll do a bit. I'll actually do a video about Dark Trace. So I'll skip Dark Trace. Just I'll actually do a video. I see a couple of stuff I need to check fine tune. I'm actually doing a video about Dark Trace, and uh, that's the one of the next thing um, I'll like to come and uh, speak about. So let's go to the market. Um, uh, market just now. So let me just change the banner. Uh, market sell off again. I'm just gonna say, do not trust market. Just chill. Just chill. Okay. So let me. Just show you what I have on my slide. So today agenda is really three things. Should we be fearful? What should we be watching out for? A lot of charts I want to show you. 
And, you know, strategy going forward, you know, you don't necessarily have to do anything just now, but, you know, just be aware of the environment that's going on just now, okay? So I'm going to show you two things because, like I said early on, this was meant to be done yesterday when everything was sell off. And today, things are going to green again. And I checked the fear and greed chart. This was what was happening yesterday, you know, sell off, VIX going at 20. It was at 55. It was not even at the, the red zone yet. You know, it's not even scale. I was, you know, thinking this might be the sell off that, you know, the, the institution of fund investors are waiting for to take profits because coming to the end of the year, they have to consolidate the account. They have to basically take the card up saying, we have gained so many percentage of yield. This is time to capture profit. I was thinking this might be the turn to go slowly red over the next few days. But guess what? Today, it went back 62. People are buying on the debt. People are not afraid. Huge liquidity out there. People are buying retails, funds. So very surprised that people are still buying out there, you know. You and me, you know it, yeah, things are pretty high. But some stocks, the hypergroup stocks, looks very, very and a good level to buy. So I'm going to speak about some of them today. So, okay, you know me, I like to speak about the VIX. The VIX is still applicable to today. A couple of weeks ago, I said the VIX will come to a point where we will be cruise controlling at level 12, 10, 11. So that's a really cool zone. That's when we're back to recovery mode. And we haven't been at that zone for the last two years. Okay, this is where we are. And is it really over? So the trend I see just now is every time the VIX goes up for the last few times, you know, since this year, there's always a huge rejection candle, okay? A huge rejection where what we're saying rejection is, you see a long candle, but a very, very long wick, meaning that it rich on the top. It's one of these days where things sell off when Tesla or Nvidia goes on a huge sell off. Very, very deep. And then suddenly people start buying and they bounce back up. That's called the rejection. Rejection of going even lower. People are rejecting. People are saying, stop. That's the buy trigger. We're buying. We're going into buy. So you see it before it actually bounces back down. So when the VIX goes back down, things recover back to normal. Okay. So rejection, rejection, rejection. I don't see, I didn't see that yesterday. So I'm thinking it might go to 25. But guess what happened today when I looked at it again? Boom. There's no rejection yet. So I'm thinking, I'm saying, uh, personally, you know, I can't forecast the market, but this is my experience. There's no rejection seen, so I don't think that's the tops yet. It looks like it's over, but don't uh, don't, don't trust it yet. I, you know, I, I'm refusing. I am refusing, refusing, refusing to trust it at this point. And uh, I think I'm missing a slide here somewhere. Um, I am indeed missing a slide. Okay, so I am. Ref I am refusing to, to trust it just now, okay? So a couple of stuff that I've seen on the news, okay? Um, let me just stop and share my screen. Um, let, I need to make sure, I think it's best if I show my entire screen. Okay, if I, it's easy if I show my entire screen because I've got a couple of snapshots that I want to share. Um, give me a second. Okay, this is one of them that I want to share, okay? Here, so Fed members ready to raise. So that, that is where we're coming from. It's quite strange that the market's recovered. You know, uh, the federal chairman has spoken. You know, he's going to be elected. And he's saying that, it's, you know, the plan about a month ago was saying that uh, he wants to make sure that he wants to slow the taper down. You know, the buying of like uh, 1.5 billion, he's going to slow from 2 billion to 1.5 to 1. So he's got plans so of step change, step change coming in. And then interest rates we we'll discuss later. But for some reason, that's with jamming the interest rate rise hike in between. So halfway through, the tapering, the rates might go up. And some people are saying that the rates might go up four times next year in the US, three to four times on 25 basis points each time. So we might see the rates right up to a point to at least 2% uh, by middle or end of uh, next 2020. So that affects the whole world. That affects the whole world. That means liquidity is getting smaller and money is not cheap anymore. And hopefully that brings inflation down. But then by history, it doesn't really mean that once you flick on the switch, inflation comes up. That's not. Things might go out of control before it slowly dampens down. So that will, in fact, affect the stock market, especially growth stocks. Growth stocks will go down uh, quite dramatically for a short period. Because why? Because growth stocks go down because sales and revenue will slowly decrease and money is not cheap no more. They've got high interest rates and loads to pay. So growth stocks revenue, you know, your, your 70 or your 30, 40, 50% growth might decrease. So that, that is the only short term fear for coming up to early Q1, Q2 2022. Okay, so uh, back to the charts. I don't know if you guys can see the charts again. Let me just go back to stream yet, making sure that I share the right screen. Okay. Okay, so let me just breeze through the charts. Okay, allow. So this is where I am. I don't think I can trust market. I don't think it's really a sell-off point. We might see again how the market reacts tomorrow. So uh, really high. I 
think they might be selling. I'm not talking about major kill, killer sell-off, but I think people might, uh, institution might take profit. I'm surprised they're not taking it greedily just now to let a nice sale to Christmas. So we need to watch and see. I don't trust it, but I think people are still sitting there thinking, what do we do next? I think they're waiting for a big whale to make a move before they make a move. So everybody's uncautious. But as retail investors like you may, we look at individual stocks. Okay, individual stocks that I look at, uh, for example, like the likes of Apple. See, this is from yesterday, not today. Yeah, Apple, I believe, has recovered. This from yesterday, it looks like a sell-off started. You can see the rejection candle coming back down. It looks like a sell-off started. It's on a peak. It may be coming back down. And this is where we are. That's the tops. But going higher, I don't really think, yes, we might have this new car that's been announced, that, uh, the announcement. But, you know, we have to look at the overall market um, concern because it's not. Apple's business that's the impact is the market itself. So we have just to watch and learn. So coming to buy now, I think it's a, a wrong. I personally wouldn't buy any any of these key stocks now. Okay, uh, AMD. A friend texted me yesterday. Say, is it time to buy AMD? I said, no, it's not the time to buy AMD. Wait for the support zone. I think we are quite far off the fifty day and two hundred day moving average. Maybe we have to wait for a bit of a dip round about this zone. One one eight looks very very low. But guess what? Today I think it's going up five percent. So it's kind of a very hard one to catch. Okay. So is is AMD going to break away? I, I like AMD. I own AMD. I want it to break away. But if you guys follow me, I've already shell up to to say buy AMD since the nineties. So if you guys have bought it nineties, a hundred hundred. 1020 to buy at 150 is a bit too expensive so wait for the pullback a bit you know wait for the right time because you know it's going up the straight line things go straight up it will come back down eventually because it's it's not just literally a straight line and the next one nvidia as well nvidia is up and down up and down up and down around about 300 so it looks like a nice consolidation zone for them and the earnings coming out, it should be nice. Uh, oh, the earnings, earnings has gone. Sorry, the earnings has gone. So this is a nice consolidation zone at 300 so um be patient uh, if you guys have been buying at the levels of 200, 250. That's it. That's where you buy. You're going to buy now. Maybe just wait for opportunity to step back or wait till uh, uh, the right time. What One of those uh, freak uh, spike up to 25 VIX. And then you might see a nice uh, return at 280, 275. So uh, be patient. No rush to buy it yet because you should be buying last month and two months ago when they were ramping up. That was the time you should be buying. This time, just, you know, hold your cash. No rush, no rush into it. So Amazon is one of those very, very strange ones. 15 months of consolidation going sideways. Folks are still buying Amazon. And, you know, for the first part is during the divorce of Jeff Bezos and him stepping down. His wife was selling, his ex-wife was selling off as well. So 15 months of consolidation. Is it time to go in? And now we're hitting the peak where e-commerce are out of favor. E-commerce stocks, even SEA are out of favor. So this one, I think the consolidation will go sideways. But if you are an Amazon holder, then you just have to hold it until the next breakaway. End of day, it's Christmas coming up. January, it could be February. It could be March before a breakaway. But we just have to wait and see. It's one of those stocks that you can sleep on, that you can buy and accumulate, and it's expensive, waiting for the stock split as well. So it's entirely up to you. If you want to cash out to find somewhere else, find somewhere that you could be a higher share price than Amazon. And obviously, don't sell Amazon for Alibaba. So that's my M. It's if you own Amazon, just hold on, hold on. And, um, you know, just have to wait, just have to be patient sometimes. And if you have held another 15 months of patience, I think the break will be pretty, pretty strong. Okay, so now, you know, this is from yesterday again, where it's no shoot point showing today where it's all green. It's always good to go back when it's all red. So this is the stock yesterday, Zoom Dash Lemonade Fast D SEA Limited Surprising Drop to 279. CrowdStrike all dropping. So these are the stocks, hyper growth stocks that has a 40 to 60% growth. They look pretty attractive just now. Okay. Some of them look pretty attractive. The mega cap stocks, the index are on the sell-off. I think it's still a long way to run, but they, these are the stocks have gone sell-off even sooner. They were selling off like last week already. So some of them may look attractive, but you have to think how much more are you buying to the stocks? Because remember interest rates, right? May not be a favor of this company. So top up, fine. But you have to hold it long term. You might not see some yield in 2022 because of interest rate hike, but you have to see beyond 2022. I said on Discord list today. Stocks now, you cannot see in year on year. You have to buy stocks that you have seen in the next five years, meaning 2022, three, four, five, and six. You have to see companies in longevity. Can this company perform 30, 40, 50% growth? If they can, then buy it. If you think Laminate can perform a 40% growth year on year on year at 2025, buy it. Can you see Peloton doing 40% year on year on year? I don't see it. Don't buy it. Can you see CrowdStrike doing 
35 to 40, 50 percent growth year on year on year? I think so. Ben get it. Uh, DraftKings, can you see that going 40, 50 percent year on year? I don't think so. It's very trendy. Stuff like that. Spotify, Okta, do you see them going five years? No. Last year, this year, we'll be talking about quarter on quarter. But now we have to look long term because 2022 might not be a year for you to see yield because it should be the industrials, it should be the travel stocks, it should be the bank stocks. These are the stocks that are more favorable for institutions to be buying. So I'm not saying rotate now, change now, but saying sometimes at the end of the day, we are long term investors. We have to hold, accumulate. And this might 2022 might be the period to buy, hold, and accumulate. Okay. So this is where I really want to stress. I'm not asking people to sell. It might be an opportunity time to buy and top up. No, go, don't ape it in, go, don't go crazy, throw your house loan in, it's just dollar cost average as you can afford. But you just have to stum up a potentially a long volatility uh, months ahead. But if companies individually do well on earnings, then they will do well. Okay, Twilio is the one I've seen. It is really, really dropping an internet that firm, and we still need, I don't see Twilio going down. It is not a company just, just for the lockdown. I'm still using much internet as much as possible, and we need Twilio companies, corporate business business, Twilio to, to run the show. Dropping at 262, it looks like it's a nice buy trigger around that zone. So if you need internet stocks and you think that you're going to buy it for the long-term run, then that is a good zone. And the next one is 221, not too far off. So if you do want to buy now, wait for the next dip. But then again, they are waiting for another two to three quarters earning and then they make sure the price uh, range is affordable up to the next breakaway at 450. Maybe not in the next two to three quarters, but they will eventually break away the 450 at some point in time. Nine months, 12 months, 14 months. Eventually they will. Okay, when you look back five years, this company is cheap as of this price today. Next one, Okta. I'm going cybersecurity. Man, I, I don't see any cycles with cybersecurity. We are in the year in a generation where things are growing, a blockchain, a web 3.0. Every company needs a company to, to supply their, their essentials. And this is one of them. So to see Okta rise all the way up to the top 280 and swing trade back down, this looks like a buy-in point for you. Look at the support line at 208. It's a no-brainer. If you have shortage of cybersecurity, then get it. And people are calling them. It is not, it's out of flavor just now. Cybersecurity, dark trades, they are really completely out of flavor. So it's not because of their company. It's just people think that, you know, people are out, out and about and cybersecurity are falling. So, um, folks are definitely taking profit. It's an easy one to take profit. But if you're in a long-term, long game, you you, you know, uh, I would be buying this one. I, you know, dark trace is for me. So you have to pick one of the cybersecurity stocks. You'd have to buy all of them, pick one that you like and you're closer to. So it's just a no-brainer for me. But again, don't expect to bounce back up. Risk and reward. You are at a very low end risk, a very high end reward. You know, I wouldn't buy the tops, but it looks like a nice point to buy at the... Uh, uh, Point. I think I just rotate my screen away. So same as CrowdStrike. Um, let me just go view. Sorry, I think I zoomed up by accident. I hope you guys can see. It. Okay, yes, you're on the right slide. Okay, so CrowdStrike is the same, same as Okta. I'm not going to repeat myself. If you do want to buy the zone, 208. So it's one of those, I'm not asking the APN, again, dollar cost average, if this is one of your convicted stocks, or if this is one of those convicted stocks that you say, oh, I missed CrowdStrike. Is this an opportunity? There you go. Okay, there you go. Again, don't expect to jump back up. I just want to reiterate that. Don't expect to jump out really quick. PayPal, on the other hand, a few folks ask me, Alex, is it time to buy PayPal? Uh, because they're, they're the liaison with Amazon. Is it time to Vimo? But then the thing is, Vimo, Amazon, PayPal, it's only for the Americans, yeah? <laughs> Amazon's blocked my visa in the UK. I don't really use Amazon anyway, but I might have to buy a couple of batteries. Um, does it affect me, Vimo and PayPal? For me, PayPal, it's in a bigger category of issue. They are below 20% growth. They are no longer a hyper growth stock. They've turned into like an old person stock. It's slowing down. This is going to look, some folks on Twitter are going, oh, it's a buy time. You know, selling your selling your crappy old PayPal is diamond hands to me. But to me, is I think there's a bigger problem with PayPal. I think um, there's a lot of disruption. Are the emerging market trying to disrupt PayPal, trying to grab market shares? A lot of blockchain, like I'm heavily into crypto, a lot of blockchain, uh, a lot of online banking are really competing with PayPal just now. So PayPal, I'm not convinced me, me enough for me to, to go. It's a great time to buy. So for me, I wouldn't catch a falling knife just now. I think that's a bigger fundamental issue going with PayPal. So if you want to get PayPal, I personally, if you're my brother, my sister asked me, Alex, you get PayPal? I wouldn't get PayPal. I think let's look elsewhere. Payment company should be blockchain, should be crypto, should be payment, should be diversified, should be outside of America. 
End of story. Okay, uh, what is next? Oh, Facebook. Facebook Meta. I've changed my whole thesis on Facebook. I've said it on my last live spot, and I, I I'm strong on Facebook. At the moment, I don't know where to buy trigger. As you can see, the metaverse is strong. Facebook is close to one trillion, and Facebook will produce another five hundred billion company with metaverse if they kick it off properly. Today, I've seen like the luxury brand Nike, Louis Vuitton. Adidas, all collaborating, trying to get a metaverse. And Facebook may be the funnel. Facebook is most likely the funnel for these companies to go into build virtual reality stores out there. So Facebook, if I had a spot to buy uh, stocks, Facebook would be the one. But again, expensive. Again, if I look long term, breaking beyond 400, Facebook, uh, I like it. If you're a young person watching this show, thinking of buying one of the fangs, Facebook is become my current favorite one. Okay. Okay. Now going into a recovery mode. So Alex, interest rates hike. I need to protect myself from some interest rate hike type stocks. What do I look at? So this is the ones that were green yesterday. The reason why they were green, because these are the stocks that should be the 2022 play. I'm not asking you to go ape in, but you know, if you want to diversify, if you want a bit of basis for a 2022 uh, grill, this are the ones. You got Morgan Stanley, you got Bank of America, you got Goldman Sachs, you got some oil, you got Expedia, you got Starbucks, you got EasyJet travel. So it's a trend, McDonald's. This is the trend that the, this are the companies that you will be using after coming out of the lockdown. We might go into a couple of European countries going into lockdown, but this looks like an agenda. That's what we should be looking next year. Because you and me think about it. What are we going to do next year? We are all hoping to go out travel again. We are all out hoping to go and sit at Starbucks and chat to our friends. We're all out hoping that, you know, we're going to use TripAdvisor. We're going to see industrials moving. That's a, This is the hope that we want to see for next year. It's not just about how interest rates hike, but it's the normality they want to get back. So stocks, like this, are starting to creep back up, are starting to recover. I'm not saying that they will double and triple, they've recovered quite well, but they'll be hitting a point where they might peak and they'll start going sideways because they have to need the earnings to boost them up. So if you're looking for reliable stocks that you're going, Banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, my favorite still, and I'm not a big fan of Starbucks, but I do own some McDonald's for uh, for my other family portfolio. And you know some travel stocks, TripAdvisor, uh, Expedia, not a huge fan, I'd rather buy any BNB, but entirely up to you. I just need you guys to understand the, the functionality of you know growth stocks like tech will not will be the outrunners, but there are times where they're dead for a period of time. Okay. And I'm looking at the Nasdaq. You see, like I said, don't trust the market, pull off. I'm talking about, you know, it's really coming back down. It looks like it's gone back up again. But let the market decide, let the fund managers decide whether they're going to start selling. But if they do sell, we're looking at the zone between this zone that it might drop to. So I'm, I'm saying is don't trust the market to go higher so soon. They will go higher. Okay, I'm not saying that the market will not go. They will go higher, but I think a substantial pullback will be needed to shake them out, shake out all the weak legs, shake out all the weak holders before they go up higher. That's all I'm saying. And finally, uh, same for the S&P 500. S&P 500 is more heavily weighted to uh, industrials to travels to oil so less likely this will go to shake up because they'll have stocks holding them up but the nasdaq is very more tacky so less likely the nasdaq will come down first but the SP 500 will, might go dip a bit down but most likely go sideways because it's going to be offset uh from its own so really that is uh that is that's the last of the chart all i'm saying is i'm going to put this last chart here people are not fearful it's actually gone back in greed i don't think it's um it's over i think it's still possible i might be wrong but this is me, basically, retail investors, buying now, aping in. I'm just going to sit and wait, sit on my hands, don't do anything. Okay, don't do anything. Uh, you don't have to panic sell. You know, you could have been selling on some of your Tesla stocks to take some capital, but you don't have to go all in just now. Just wait for the right time. And this is not the right time to buy. Even if you don't miss the next two, three weeks, you know, you can always wait till January. It's no rush, no rush to buy. It's not like a bargain that you have to go and buy, you know. Inflation, hard to get Lego sets, but it doesn't mean that you have to buy every stocks. So this is where I am really coming from. Don't panic buy and and the debt, but also don't panic sell because you know you could you should have been buying the stocks since months ago. So really, it's nothing to panic. Just don't do anything. Really, don't do anything. End of the day, keep investing. Money is still being printed. Uh, your salary is not growing growing up further. If you are, your salary is going up. Well done, well done to you. And outgoing is increasing. You know, I, I'm still a believer of own some stocks, own some crypto. And the worst enemy of all is inflation because everything is going through the roof. That is really what I want to really present today. And that is really what I want to share for the last half an hour. So nothing really to panic. But um, 
we just have to be aware of what we are reading on the news because I've got a lot of new investors, you know, friends that have never invested or coming up to me say, Alex, the market's panic sell off. What's happening? What's happening? So I'm just saying that don't let the news um, mess you about. Don't let the don't don't let the news um, uh, uh, panic you to buy or panic you to sell and confuse you. That's what they're trying to do, confuse you. But in fact, everyone is still trying to decide where to go. And remember, Thanksgiving is literally around the corner. So don't do anything until post Thanksgiving and let people have a rest in America. Let the whole reconfigure and see what, what's going to happen. And uh, really, Thanksgiving is coming up. So people might just chill out before it all happens. So this is what I really say, don't trust the market, but then again, don't have to really panic to do anything. Don't have to panic sell, don't have to panic buy, just sit and relax and chill and spend time with the family. Yep, so this is me, Q&A. I just want to run through to see if anybody's got any any question that uh, you know you want me to run through. And I know some of you might be, um, uh, you know, at a time of, you know, tired, you know, it's quite tired. I find it quite tiring, so many things happening in shopping and everything. So, okay, so I'm just going to, uh, uh, Captain Chainshaw, I think I know who you are. I might have received an email from you. Um, uh, yeah, I think I know who you are from uh, the man called XRP. I need to, if it is you, Captain Chainshaw, I'll reply to the email. That's good. I, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um, uh, you know, don't agree. Oh, sorry. I wish I'm just a regular dad here trying to to to, to help everyone. Uh, so I appreciate it, Marizena. I really appreciate it. And uh, Uday, hi Alex, no from how are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, the market's over. See you in the next four years. Thank you for everything. Uh, market's over. Yep, I guess. Um, yeah, the market's going really sideways. <laughs> if maybe that's what you think here. Uh, brief before before the uh, Congress for in December. Yeah, exactly. It's like a breeder, and really don't have to do anything. Like Tom, I think Tom in a way agrees that. This might be time just to look at, oh, sell off, but it's not cheap enough for me to buy and it's not too panicky enough for me to sell at the same time. So, um, and Captain Change, your global financial crash on the horizon, gold and other precious metals will be reevaluated. Yeah, um, I've not looked at gold and precious metal. That's in fact something I need to, to monitor because I've been so much into crypto. I do forget the real the real currency is something that I need I need to really, really look at um, uh, for the future to come. And I think I'm looking down. I noticed a couple of uh, folks are asking for, for dark trace. Uh, is that trace a buy now? Yeah, um, dark trace is one for the future. Surprise to getting to this level. Definitely wonderful. So I'm actually. Um, Going to do a video. I know that I mentioned this guy. Nobody watched my dark trace. I was throwing a tantrum. Nobody do, does read my dark trace video. So I'm not going to do it. So, but uh, I, I will do a dark trace video because they I do. Uh, folks actually bought in dark trace when I when I said to buy on the level uh, focus. So things have changed. Dark trace has been downgraded. FTSE 250. But let me do a, a, a specific video uh, instead so that people can make a decision. The video will be very broad to the point that. For me, I'm holding, I've not done anything, I'm not buying dark trace as well because I'm busy with crypto. But if I had money, I would buy it because it really hit my trigger level. But uh, some folks are, you know, some investors are all different. Some people don't like the fact that it's going down. But uh, in that video, I will also give you options to risk transfer. If you guys don't know what risk transfer is, it's basically sell, but make sure you sell and jump over to another stock which have got an upside potential to make you sleep at night. You know, I want to take the pain away from you to help you guys to make a decision. Giving somebody an option in life, it's better than, you know, throwing money at someone. Giving somebody an option to make a decision, I think it's more important because everybody makes a different decision. Okay. And Ekwan Shahid, Selamat Pagi, my friend. I know you're from Malaysia, not Indonesia. I made a mistake like last time. So Selamat Pagi to you. Must be very, very early. And Peter Chu, I know you asked the question about PayPal. I don't know if I responded to you. I did see, I didn't respond. So for me, like I said, just now early on, PayPal has not convinced me fundamentally that they are competing with everybody else. Me being in the crypto space, like the likes of Terra Luna, I am with Square, looking at Square, Coinbase is coming out of the credit card. So there are a lot of competition trying to compete with PayPal. PayPal has got Vinmo, has got Amazon, but Vinmo, Amazon is really America. In the UK, they've canceled my Visa card. I can't use my Visa card on Amazon. So it's really, I can't use Vinmo. I don't have PayPal to go in. So things like that, I need to reevaluate. So PayPal need to convince me that they are the monster they they, they deem they are they are the Facebook of marketing. They need to deem that monster. So for now, PayPal looks cheap, but I know I think I've, my money goes better elsewhere. So this is me for now. I'm not saying PayPal is not the buy, but I think it's about time that um uh that, that we need to do. Okay. So Chai X, thank you very much. Hi, I did see your message early on. Sorry, I'm late. 
and uh you know i'm here just now <laughs> and do you still own in tesla i don't own any tesla anymore but i just want to make it clear to uh, to, to to everyone that uh my pension still has tesla uh my family you know my partner's pension is tesla my kids has still got tesla the only one i saw is my own personal tesla that i don't swing that i bought since before the stock split and i've taken enormous profit and gone into stock so i have not completely less left tesla it's just my personal tax-free isa account but pension, Tesla is still there. Kids, Tesla is still there. So I cannot sell my kids Tesla. I'll ask the permission. Do you want to sell Tesla? My son said, no, no, no. So he makes the decision. I have to respect that. Okay. But I agree with him. I agree with him. Okay. Um, I think I can see you. I'm not sure about the shadow band, but I will have to check. Now, I, at least I know your name is Captain Change or Mr. G. <laughs> okay. So um, I do hope uh, folks find it useful. Uh, uh, today oh we've got more comments uh, i hope folks find it useful and i think growth stocks will fall when interest rates rise uh, equities do not look that attractive um yes uh yes i, I completely agree with you uh Dutton studios i completely 100 that growth stocks will fall when interest rate rise but we need to to understand that they will fall for a short period of time like I said earlier on, 2022 might not be a great year for growth stock. It might look like ARK Invest in 2021. So it might not, even ARK Invest is changing her strategy where Katie Wood is implementing quick shots on her portfolio. When stocks come out, she's going to quick shot to make sure that she doesn't fall that hard. So even she's thinking that 2022 might not be great for growth stocks. But if you look beyond that, if you're accumulating companies that you think will still go 30, 40, 50% revenue growth, you are on the right banner. So that's that's where you need to focus. Don't panic and start selling off at a loss. It's the last thing I want to do. I want you to look beyond that, beyond that. A good question, Andrew. Um, thank you for asking the question. What price will we buy back Tesla? I'm actually looking at 950, 900. In fact, here, yeah, I am on crypto, but the fact that I have got UST on my Terra Luna, that doesn't mean a single thing. Basically, I can buy uh, Tesla on with a crypto. Basically, I'm just waiting. I've got uh, crypto funds on uh, Mirror Protocol, synthetic stocks. So if, if, if Tesla drops to 950, if I got cash, I'll buy some. I'll still top up. Like I said, I don't mind if Tesla goes 2000 because I think Tesla is a $3 trillion company. It's 2000 but with my money that I'm on crypto just now, I could easily 2x, 3x at the current time. I'm not saying easily, but it is an opportunity to go even faster. And then I'll bring my money back, back in Tesla. So 950, 800. If it drops again, I'll buy. But I know that it's going back up again, but I'm not in a rush to buy it. I'm only buying at the right time. Okay. And on Alibaba, uh, I. Uh, I mean, mix about Alibaba or any Chinese stocks. Just now. I know I did say that uh, Neo is a good buy, but someone argued with me that Chinese as a whole global, it's not a great time to buy in. So it's something that I'm not saying I'm buying it just now, but I, it's one of those stocks that if they're ready to momentum rise, Chinese stocks is a great entry point to go in. I actually even tell somebody that watch out for the Chinese uh, index funds growth because I think Beijing is opening the stock market and that should flood some liquid into uh, uh, into equities. So it's a good news. It's good news. But when we just have to be, I rather buy stocks on the momentum rise than buy stocks on the dip. So it makes me sleep easy at night. Okay. Um, Jonathan, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, how are you doing well? Great. I, thoughts on DBX and ELY. Um, and honestly, I don't know what DBX is. I'm just thinking Dragon Ball. <laughs> I, hang on. I'm sorry, I don't know what DBX or ELY is. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to write it down. B X E L Y. So maybe I'll get back to you on um, on Discord. I know you're on Discord, so Jonathan. I really don't know how <laughs> DBX or ELY. I'm sorry, Alex. As uh, under thirty year old with over five k in grass crypto, where would you go? Great question. I know we're slowly tweeting in crypto. So for me. Personally, uh, crypto, I mean, uh, Terra Luna is what I hold. I like Terra Luna. I've been telling everybody about Terra Luna. So if, you, if you're young, you've got 5K, you know, distribute it, distribute it. You know, folks are saying go buy Ethereum. Ethereum is a bit high just now, but still, Ethereum is one of those, um, there we go. But you as a person who's young, a young person, try to not just buy, but also buy and try to farm and try to stake and do all that. So for me, young person, 30 years, good horizon. Polkadot is great to buy. Polkadot has got parachain auction just now. Buy Polkadot. Use half of it or use 2K. Buy Polkadot on Binance and use the parachain auction and auction a few because you are an early investor if you go parachain. Basically, you put 2,000 pounds of Polkadot. You uh, vote on projects 
And this project, you can vote on two projects or three projects. And these three projects reward in the next three months will give you that two grand offset. You have to keep this two grand locked away. But after two years, you will basically double or triple or quadruple your money because you're investing in early projects. Projects could fail, but this project's been handpicked, selected by the, the, the community that they will do well. So I would say Polkadot is one that you're going to Tyro Luna, I like it. But if you want a bit higher risk, render R&DR. And also a Phantom is one I like. If you miss AVEX, don't go with AVEX and go for Phantom. These are the ones I like. And also, young person, you know, think about Sands, uh, Mana. Those are the gaming stocks that um, it's it's crazy. Sands is one of them. I'm watching, I missed the boat on Sands. It's basically like Roblox, but on the blockchain community. Something to look at. I don't want you to go and buy those Bitcoin, Ethereum. Great, great blue chip, great blue chip. But you know there are other stocks that could even uh, go even higher. So that's that's where I'm going. But again, diversify, experiment, explore, pick a team that you like. Many teams out there you have to pick on. Avex is not too bad as well, but it's really I think the boat is left for for Avex. Okay, so uh, a sense I think another crypto question. What do you think of the Bitcoin? We go down more. Yes, I think I think that we need a shake off. Leverage is going up. We need a shake off. I think we need. I want to see a bit more shake off to the close to fifty two. But don't go lower than 52. You panic everybody and everybody will leave the show. Don't panic because with the stock market sell-off, it's a great time for guys in the stock market to jump over the crypto and get some crypto and start moving with Bitcoin moving up. So I want that shake-off. I want that shake-off to be confident that uh, there's no leverage and we are on a healthy run-up. So that, that is uh, where I'm coming from. Um, Alif, 1988, how are you doing? Morning, I'm from Sabah, Malaysia. Hello, I hope you're from Kota Kinabalu. Uh, uh, after hearing, I've started looking at crypto too. Yep, uh, look into crypto. Uh, great. Um, B, don't, don't go into how the high risk stock. I know same goes for ADA as well. Don't go into like super high risk and all. If you go high risk, put like, you know, mound that you can uh, afford to lose, you know. the stories where people put in high risk stocks and those high risk stocks, 100x, yeah. But you know, out of that hundred X, it could be fifth, it could be ten different ones before they found that hundred X. So, uh, pick and choose. But always pick one with a great community: Phantom, Avex, uh, Solano, um, XRP, uh, even Cardano. Great community. It doesn't mean that look at the share. Even Polygon has great community. Buy one of those great community. Great community means great developers. Great developers create great, great products. Great products will really push the price up for the long term run. Okay. Um. Enrico Verger, I've been waiting for Tesla Q4 figures. In the meantime, I keep to I keep my stocks. Yep, um, it's going to be in January. Um, the only thing I'm waiting for Tesla is what the forecast is is for 2022, the amount of cars they deliver. And again, it's a really straight line graph for Tesla. Tesla hitting the three trillion in 2025. It's it's just waiting to be done. It's just when do you get in and how long can you wait for it? Tesla investors can wait. But if you think that you can take your stock money out and go explore somewhere else, fine. But if you think you just want to keep in, keep buying in, fine. That's all you do. You have to keep buying. But remember, you need a huge volume of capital at its current status to make that $1 million if that's your target or your $10 million, okay? So it's not like the days where Tesla has basically 50x. Now Tesla will only go to 2, 3, 4x in this decade and hopefully 5x at the end of the decade. So this is where we see about Tesla, okay? Um, uh, Mark, can watch it inside Bitcoin miners. I'm bullish on Bitcoin, but I think you do okay. But I just want to see your thoughts on a miner like Har Mara Riot Hive. I don't know. Someone asked a question last time, but uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, Bitcoin miner. I know the likes of KDA are coming out with Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin mining. Uh, I think uh, there's another company I cannot remember, but they're encouraging people to mine in the house with lower capacity uh, computer. But for me, with Ethereum going proof of stake, hopefully end of the year, or perhaps maybe even next year. Um, I'm not a huge fan of minor stocks. I rather um, buy stocks to go proof of stakes, meaning stake my coins. Phantom, Avax, Cardano, you can stake your coins. So I rather stake my coins and then take them in and out rather than buying a big hard S type, uh, type company. So hit and miss type uh, on, on this um, uh, Bitcoin minor stocks. I'm not a fan. I rather go proof of stakes with my actual coin or just, just, yeah, just proof of stakes. <laughs> um, Yes, Captain James Shaw, BTC and Tether to collapse, House of Cards, waiting for money to flow into XRP. Yeah, um, I've seen news about the SEC potentially on CNBC. Don't know how real, but it's very positive that SEC are in a negotiation ground where, who knows, XRP might be released next year. 
and we will see XRP on Coinbase. We see XRP everywhere. So you know, don't 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 erase them out. XRP has been sitting on the on the pedestal, very very strong, not moving the likes of Cardano, even with Solano, AVEX coming up, but XRP is standing very very strong. So don't count them up. I'm also watching XRP and uh, hopefully to to engage in more of the community. But I've not found anybody on Twitter that's on XRP. It's all Ethereum folks every single day. Then again. Eda, thank you very much. Alif, uh, Salamat Fagi to you, and it's good to see you. And Baron, Palantir, and Ouijo, and... Uh, can, oh, but Baron, um, did I not show a chart on Palantir? Did I not show a chart? How can I come on a show and not show a chart on Palantir? Maybe I messed it up completely, but I do have a chart on Palantir. If you give me one second, if I can find my silly old Palantir stock, where are you, Palantir? I am just so shocked that I did not get about it. So for the last question of the day, of the night, the evening, I will speak about Palantir and to help Baron um, see what my point of view, but obviously Baron knows that I'm not a financial advisor. He will do, will do your own research, but I will show you my chart and what I see. Yeah, you get the gist. Okay. Um, so this was from yesterday when Palantir was dropping. So Palantir uh, is creating, uh, so basically it broke its ground. Its ground at 21 bucks, it's broke that. It's breaking down and you can see the candles are going, it's very bearish. And it's trying to create an artificial floor zone at around about 20, but it's the real floor next down is 17. So if you already own Palantir, if you want to buy more, I would say, hold on, buy until the 17.68 just to buy back in. Remember, Palantir stocks, it's slightly already ahead of its time, ahead of its price. So if you want to buy again, 17. But again, Palantir is one of the stocks where you see this floor at 17 here. Yeah, These are the holders. These are the holders. It's one of the stocks that people hold and buy. People, anything goes below 17.65, people will buy in. These are the holders that believe in Palantir. It's like the early days of Tesla, where Tesla will fall, but they hit a specific floor. Palantir has got a huge fan base. AMD, NVIDIA, they got a huge fan base where they're holding. We're not talking about retail holders here. We're talking about institution going, who sells at 17? That's the time to buy. So if you want to dollar cost average, wait till it goes to that floor, the real support floor, and then buy it. So this is where I think Palantir, huge support, huge confidence. They are not business to consumer where they sell Apple, Apple phone, iPhones or Apple cars and you see the Christmas sales go up. This are the company where it looks at contracts and business and how they're turning around. Great superiority on the board, great superiority on the leadership. So that's artificial flaw just now. I would buy and I'll wait for the drop down. But again, long term hold, it's one of those stocks. When it's going to jump, it's going to jump. But when next year or year after, we don't know. But it's one of those you just have to just have to just have to hang on with them. So I don't own Palantir. Uh, it's got no room for my for my, my goals and target, but a lot of uh, Discord uh, uh, members own it. And I'm just telling them, you know, it's one of those really long-term ones and really it'll do you good because it's not overly overpriced like the likes of Rivian or any other stocks out there that you've seen. Super overpriced and you just don't understand how to even start. The Palantir is starting to establish itself saying, that is a good zone. That's a good buy. But you just have to hold for super mega long term. Okay. So that is me. That is me. But I have seen a good friend on the chart. I cannot not let him uh, speak. Duncan, uh, coming late. All stuff sounds great. I'll be watching record version. Can you learn more about crypto? Yep. Uh, hopefully, um, it's Thursday tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a session or a recorded version for crypto. There's so much going in. Um, uh, so much, you know, so much going, but all the action is on the Discord channel. Every day I'll be in there chatting on Discord channel, but I'm really, really busy with a couple of projects on my blockchain investment. So, you know, it's not this forum to, to, to share today, but hopefully I'll share it more uh, later on. But it's really, it's crypto is really keeping up me awake at night, every single night. But this is me. This is me. So I hope that um, you guys have a good night, good evening. Thank you for showing up. I was meant to do half an hour, but I'm here for eight minutes because I love it to chat to everyone everyone every time so thank you take care i hope to see you soon and i will do definitely a, a dark trace video um hopefully tomorrow but i just need to clear a few stuff out of the cobwebs before i present uh, data itself thank you have a good time and i hope to see you guys soon okay <laughs> good night leave